You. Yeah, you. I really need your detective help with these riddles. Maria came to a beauty salon. She had two appointments, a manicure and a haircut. Suddenly, she realized that one of the professionals working there was dangerous. Who was it? The hairdresser with huge stained scissors and brushes in the pocket of her apron? Or the nail tech with a nail file and suspicious red stains on her uniform? Look at the manicurist more attentively. In her bag, you'll notice a knife, a rope, and a tape. She's definitely dangerous. Look at these people waiting for their flight at the airport. Can you figure out which of them is a dog owner? It's the man on the left, sitting on a bench and reading a book. Have you been attentive enough to notice he's got a bone in his bag? It must be a gift for his pooch. Now look at these guys. One of them is a zombie. Can you figure out which one it is? When you think about it, you'll understand that zombies are into brains, not computers. Plus, the guy on the right has a weirdly shaped palm. And he's looking at the other guy's head too intently. The gamer should watch out. Now, this might look like a lovely family portrait, but not all people depicted here are actually human. Can you figure out which family member is a ghost? Pay attention to the shadows. The man is the only person in this photo to have one. Sadly, the rest of his family are just ghosts. You've got to choose one room in which you'll have to spend one hour. One of the rooms is swarming with thousands of rats. Another is almost completely filled with water. And the last room is an infinite pool with jellyfish. Which room should you pick? The second room is the safest option. If you manage to stay close to the surface, you'll be able to breathe since there's a bit of space between the ceiling and the water. Oh, yes. Look at these hybrid animals. You're about to fight one of them. Think twice before picking your opponent. The wrong choice may cost you your life. Up for the hybrid of a shark and a jaguar. Such a bizarre creature won't be able to breathe on dry land, and you'll just need to wait a bit before the jury announces your victory. So you've just moved to a new town. It's so small that there are just two barber shops there. The barber working in the first one has an impeccable haircut. The hair of the barber in the second establishment looks quite messy. And still, you choose to go to the second professional. Why? Well, if there are just two barbers in the town, it means the second barber gave the first one his perfect haircut. Look at these ladies attentively. All of them seem to be pregnant. But what if I tell you that one of them has just stolen a watermelon? Can you figure out who it is? The first lady has a visible belly button. The second one doesn't hold her belly at the moment, so it must be real. As for the third girl, she's holding her belly tightly, and we can see something green through her clothes. She must be the watermelon thief. Now let's check your logistical thinking and math skills. You have three empty cups and ten sugar cubes. You need to distribute these sugar cubes between the cups in such a way that each cup contains an odd number of cubes. All you need to do is put three cubes in the first cup and three cubes in the second cup. After that, place the remaining four cubes and the second cup in cup number three. 
This way, the first cup will have three sugar cubes, which is an odd number. The second cup will have three sugar cubes, too. As for cup number three, it will contain seven sugar cubes, four of its own, and three from the second cup. You have a box with multicolored marbles. All but two of them are red, all but two are blue, and all but two are green. How many marbles are there in the box? There are just three marbles in the box, blue, green, and red. A young lady has the same number of brothers and sisters, but each of her brothers has twice fewer brothers and sisters. How many sisters and brothers are there in the family? There are four girls and three boys in the family. Once, a man decided to go on a fishing trip with his friends. He asked his wife to pack some things for him. A fishing rod, a fishing box, some clothes that would be enough for a week, and his favorite pajamas. The wife did so. After the man returned, he entertained his wife with funny stories about what had happened during the trip. Suddenly, he asked why his wife hadn't packed his pajamas. The wife immediately understood that her husband was lying to her. He hadn't been on a fishing trip. How did she understand that? The woman put the pajamas in the fishing box. And if her husband didn't find it, it means he didn't open the fishing box. What a weird fishing trip that was. Hmm. Jack is participating in a challenge. He's made it to the last stage, which takes place in a desert. If he succeeds now, he'll win $1 million. Jack needs to get a key out of one of four pots. On top of the first pot, there's a bowl filled with a strong acid. The second pot is covered with a bowl full of venomous spiders. In the bowl placed on the third pot, Jack sees a raging fire. A viper is curled up in the bowl covering the fourth pot. Now Jack isn't allowed to drop the bowls to the ground or turn them over. Which pot should he choose? The guy should choose the third bowl. He can put out the fire with sand and get the key. Camilla was afraid of dogs. One day, while jogging in the park, she noticed a large dog sitting near the bench. It looked unfriendly. The leash attached to the dog's collar was three feet long. Camilla decided it would be safe to pass by if there were at least seven feet of space between her and the animal. But even on a leash, the dog still managed to bite her. How come? Well, the leash wasn't tied to anything. Kevin, a security guard in an amusement park, found a boy standing near a roller coaster. The kid said his name was Nick. He didn't know where his father was. Kevin took Nick to his office and made an announcement. Soon after that, two men showed up at the door. The first exclaimed that he and his son had been in a cafe. But after eating his burger, the man felt so unwell, he had to spend almost 20 minutes in the bathroom. When he got out, his son wasn't around. The other man interrupted him, saying that he had ridden a roller coaster with his son. Then he left the boy to wait there and went to get some hot dogs. Which man was Nick's father? Nick is too young to ride that roller coaster. Look at that sign stating that only those older than 14 are allowed to have a ride. It means the second man is lying. The boy's dad is the unlucky guy with food poisoning. A bank manager was missing. The only suspicious thing the police found was a note left on his office desk. There were four numbers on it. His colleagues, John, James, and Otto, claimed they had nothing to do with this disappearance. But the police thought otherwise. Who did they suspect?
When you write the word 1, it starts with the letter O. 2 starts with T, and so does 3. Then we have 1 again, that's the letter O. Together, we have the name Otto. And finally, a funny riddle might help you relax. Why should you never trust gravity? Because gravity will always let you down. <laughs> Have a good one! Take a look at these three teachers in the school canteen. One of them is a vampire. Can you guess who it is? Check out carefully what they eat. The third lady has some garlic, so she can't be a vampire. The second lady has taken a bite of food from her tray, so it's most likely hers. But the first guy's food is still untouched, so he must be just bringing it to someone else. Vampires don't really need food. They feed on blood, so that salad is of no interest to him. The Smith's family, Ginger, Ross, and their kids, Polly and Bob, had a celebration and exchanged gifts. But somehow, all the cards got lost. And since all the gifts were packed in boxes of the same size, the only thing that differs is color. Can you figure out to whom each gift belongs? Ginger, the mother, must get the gifts in green wrapping paper because her name starts with a G. Ross, the father, gets the gifts wrapped in red paper. Polly, the daughter, gets all the pink ones. And Bob, the son, has all the blue gifts, following the same logic. On a winter day, Mike went skiing. Suddenly, he found a secret laboratory hidden in the mountains. It was well guarded, but curious Mike managed to find an open door. Once he got inside, the door got instantly shut and wouldn't open again. There in the lab, Mike saw three large barrels each with different stuff inside. The first barrel was literally on fire. The second one was full of acid, and there was a working electric saw in the third one. All of a sudden, Mike heard a voice. Each of the barrels contains a key that can set you free. But you aren't allowed to move the barrels. Good luck! What did Mike do to escape? Hey, it seems like this lab wasn't well heated. There were a bunch of icicles on the ceiling, so he grabbed them and threw them into the burning barrel. They melted and extinguished the fire, allowing him to grab the key. Lame Horse is the most popular club in town, and lots of people hope to get inside. However, security guards are pretty strict and all visitors must comply with the set of requirements issued by the club management. Visitors must be over 25. They must wear a total black look, and their name cannot start with an A. Now, look at these three people waiting at the entrance. Who cannot be let in? Well, look at their IDs closely. We have Ivory, who's 27. She's also dressed according to the rules. Now, here's James. He's 24, and he's wearing a red t-shirt. Out! The last person is Dylan. He's got a total black look, and it seems like he's 30. But his ID is surely fake. How can someone be born on February 31st? So, only Ivory can enter the club. Josh wanted to surprise his girlfriend and buy her a present of her dreams. But he wanted to make it a surprise, so he couldn't ask her what exactly she wanted. He decided to check out her favorites on a website she always used for online shopping. But her laptop asked for a password. Still, Josh managed to unlock it. How did he do it? Look at 
the sticker on the desk. It looks like a bunch of misspelled words. But each typo actually helps figure out the password. O in laundry, extra I in table, extra I in mice, V in the word answer, and extra E in the word cat. Altogether, it's olive. Chastity, Chris, and Jacob are at the counter near an airport gate. All of them claim they must be on the flight to Houston. But the airline employee says there's only one seat left. The computer has frozen, and he can't check the list of passengers to verify their claims. So he can only check their boarding passes and try to understand which one is real. Can you help him? The only real boarding pass belongs to Chastity. Look, the one that Chris has mentions his date of birth, which is never printed on boarding passes. The one that Jacob has doesn't have the flight number, which is almost impossible. Well, welcome aboard, Chastity! Liam was traveling on a train where he met Brian. Now, Brian invited him to have coffee in the dining car, and Liam agreed. For some reason, Liam left the train in terror at the next station without taking his belongings, even though it wasn't his destination. Why? The thing is, on the way to the dining car, Liam spotted something he couldn't see while seated. There was a huge tail visible underneath Brian's coat. He couldn't be a human, and having coffee with him could cost Liam his life. Ew. Ashley decided to change her hairstyle and headed to the nearest hair salon. There were three hairdressers available. Which one is safe? Look, the first hairdresser has just finished working with the previous client. And the client is literally crying. The hairstyle is horrendous. The second hairdresser has knives instead of special scissors. She doesn't seem to be safe either. However, the third hairdresser seems completely fine. So Ashley should pick her. Mary is a beginner gardener. She decided to grow some flowers in her garden, and there are already several sprouts. Yesterday, she watered them as usual, but today, she sees that all of her sprouts have perished. Why? Mary should have checked the weather forecast. Yesterday, the sky was covered with gray clouds. It was going to rain. So the flowers got a double portion of water, which is bad too. Mary should have covered her plants instead. It was Jenny's first month at her new school. At the end of the month, she found a note from Barry in her locker. At first, she didn't get its meaning. But when she figured out that it was encrypted, the meaning became clear to her. Take a look at the note. Can you figure out what Barry wrote to Jenny? To decipher the note, you need to understand that the numbers correspond to the placement of the letters in the note. The first letter is I, the second is L, and the eighth is K. Now keep doing this until you decipher the whole thing. The note says, I like you. It looks like Jenny has an admirer. Martha is standing on one side of a river, and her cat is on the other. Martha is calling her cat, but you know, those guys aren't into water and swimming in general. However, the cat immediately starts crossing the river without getting wet. There are no boats or bridges. How is it possible? The river is frozen, so the cat can just walk on the ice. 
1890, Bart was 15 years old. Strangely, in 1895, he was 10 years old. How is that possible? The thing is, Bart was born in 1905 BCE. The calendar worked the other way around back then. Linda and Porter were walking in the woods when they saw an old hut. They walked inside, but the door through which they entered suddenly vanished into thin air. Instead, three new doors appeared in front of them. Behind the first one, there were venomous rats. Behind the second door, arrows with poison on their tips were flying across the room at head height. And the third door hit a 30-foot deep pit. Which door leads to freedom? They should choose the second door. They don't need to walk, they can simply crawl under the arrows. Pamela met a stranger yesterday, and she immediately knew who he was. She hadn't seen this person before, and no one had ever described him to Pamela. This person wasn't a celebrity, and he wasn't doing anything unusual. How come she knew who he was? The man was Pamela's friend's twin brother. Anna went grocery shopping and bought a lot of products that needed to be stored in the fridge, like meat and cheese. When she returned home, she realized that her fridge was already full, and she had nowhere to store all those products. What should she do? Anna needs to reconsider the way she stores stuff in her fridge. For example, rice and cookies don't need to be kept there. Once she takes all the unnecessary stuff out of the fridge, she'll have enough space to store the dairy products and meat. Here are two adorable couples in front of you. Jane and John and Mary and Jack. Both are cooking something yummy for dinner together. So cute! But hey, one of the ladies is in danger. Who is it? It's Mary. Look, even though it may seem that John is trying to poison Jane's coffee, it's not like that. He's just adding some sugar. But Jack has a knife in his back pocket. It was a regular Sunday morning, and Kendall went shopping. While she was window shopping, a pickpocket ran up to her and stole a wallet from her purse. She called for help, and three police officers approached her, asking what had happened and how they could help. Can you help Kendall understand which of these three officers can be trusted? Look closely at the officers. One of them has the Apple logo on his uniform. Another one doesn't have a cap that would match the rest of his uniform. So here's the one Kendall can really trust. The other two must be the pickpocket's accomplices in disguise. At a local supermarket, employees started noticing that someone kept stealing their produce. However, they didn't spot any weird people at all. So, it must have been one of their loyal customers. The store security guard decided to re-watch the closed-circuit TV footage to find out who the thief was. Once he began watching the footage from the day before, he instantly spotted the culprit. Can you spot them too? Look, there are three customers in the footage. A woman, a teen, and an elderly lady. At the start, everything seems okay. But a couple of minutes later, 
The woman gets pregnant? Now, that's impossible. She's certainly hiding something she's stolen underneath her jumper. It was a friend's gathering. People were having fun, eating some scrumptious dishes that Susie, the host of the party, had cooked for them. The next day, in a group chat, Erica, Jacob's wife, texted that that evening, her husband had been rushed to the hospital, where he passed away a couple of hours later. The doctors said it was poisoning, and Erica rightly accused Susie of poisoning her husband. How did she do? Look at the image again and tell how Jacob was poisoned. Jacob was the only one having plain water that night. Look, everyone else was drinking tea and had no issues after the dinner. It means that the water in the jug was poisoned. Polly and Molly were walking down an avenue when they decided to sit in a cafe and have some iced lattes. No sooner had they sat down to enjoy their drinks than Polly whispered in Molly's ear, We've got to run away from here fast! There's a man that escaped from prison next to us. It's dangerous to stay here. How did she know that? There were only three customers in the cafe. These two men look totally okay. But this one is trying to hide handcuffs underneath his long sleeves. Annabelle, the world's greatest actress, woke up in a hospital. She couldn't remember anything but her name. She didn't know where she lived, where she worked, or even who she lived with. One thing she knew for sure was that she was married. There was a ring with a massive diamond on her ring finger. A couple of hours after her awakening, two men showed up in her room, Ryan and Jeff. Ryan was a young and good-looking man, and Jeff... Well, let's say he was old enough to be her grandfather. Both of them claimed she was his wife. Who is the real husband? Well, sorry to break it to you, but Jeff is her real husband. Yeah, Ryan has a tattoo that says Annabelle. But it's Jeff who has a matching wedding ring. Ryan must be one of her fans who wants to take advantage of the situation. Eric and Hugh were heading to the class reunion party. It's been 10 years since they graduated, and both of them wanted to impress their high school love interest, Mary. They both knew Mary was a pretty materialistic girl, so they needed to show how rich both of them got. Maybe this way, she could finally notice one of them and even agree to go on a date. Here's the kicker, though. Only one of the guys actually got rich. The other just pretended to be wealthy. Can you guess who it is? Easy peasy. Eric is rich and Hugh is brokey broke. Yeah, Hugh arrived at the party driving a posh car, and he's wearing designer jewelry head to toe. As for Eric, he had to use public transport to get to the party. But take a closer look at the car. There are bank loan documents piled up on the back seat. Hugh probably just rented the car for the day. Meanwhile, Eric's wearing some luxury items. He probably just didn't want to waste time in traffic. Jason is a shop assistant in a department store. At the moment, there are three people in the fitting room who he's assisting. It's Jessica, the girl wearing a green dress, Sean, the man wearing a leather jacket and skinny jeans, and Alex, the man who's currently taking a larger pair of jeans that Jason has bought. One of the clients is an alien. Jason has to figure out who it is. It's Alex. 
take a closer look at his feet. Only a reptile or an alien can have such feet. Mary was walking in the woods and suddenly saw a really fancy castle. It was getting late, and she thought she might ask for a stay in that castle. It was a wicked troll's castle, and he really didn't like intruders. Mary was captured and locked up in a dark room with two guards. Still, the troll gave her a chance to break free. There were two doors in the room. One door led to freedom, and the other one was locked. The guards knew which door led to freedom. One of the guards always told the truth, the other always lied and Mary didn't know who was who. She could ask one guard only one question. What question should she ask? Mary should say, If I ask your colleague to show me the way to freedom, what door will it be? No matter which guard replies, they will point at the locked door. The one that lies will point at the wrong door on purpose, and the one that tells the truth will do it since that's what the other one who lies would choose. This way, Mary can figure out the wrong door and choose the other one. Jane was on a hike in Africa when she decided to cross a bridge to admire the view. When she was in the middle of the bridge, she heard something moving behind her. She turned and saw a huge, hungry lion waiting for her. She turned to the other side. There were giant snakes. The water to her left was filled with hungry piranhas. Where should she go? She should jump into the lake. Piranhas don't live in lakes, especially in Africa. They live in South America. Look closer, those are just some harmless fish. A man wakes up in a place he's never been to before. He rushes to the exit and sees two doors. When he opens the first door, he sees that the hall is made of magnifying glass. The scorching hot sun fries anyone who enters in no time. Behind the second door, a huge, fire-breathing dragon is sleeping. But anyone who enters this hall risks waking it up immediately. How can the man escape safely? He needs to wait for dust when there's no sun. Then he'll be able to get out of that place. Maria lives in Paris. Once in two weeks, she goes to Saint-Tropez to see her extravagant grandmother. This time, she bought a ticket in a machine, finished her coffee in a bar, and headed for the train. Strangely, this weekend, she didn't show up in Saint-Tropez. Why? She bought the wrong ticket. It says Saint-Tropez Paris, but she needed Paris Saint-Tropez. When she tried to get on the train, the conductor immediately noticed that her ticket was wrong, and she just didn't have enough time to change it. Three wealthy businessmen complained to Detective Brooke. This week, an unknown criminal stole a car from each of them, and he left no traces. But Brooke figured out his pattern. She thinks the thief will soon commit new crimes. Mike, Colin, and Bill are at risk because they own very expensive cars. Whose car will the thief steal tonight? If you already know the answer, make sure to share it in the comments. Let's take a closer look at the order of the thefts. The colors of the cars match the colors of the rainbow – red, orange, and yellow. So Colin's green car will be the next target. Detective Brooke finds the criminal's garage and begins rummaging around. He has a secret door protected by a combination lock. 
there's a note with four images next to the door. Brooke thinks for a while, presses four numbers, and opens the door. What numbers did she press? If you nailed it right away, please let us know. The code is 2731. Each digit corresponds to the number of colors of the object in the picture. Rook enters the secret room and sees six rings on the table. Try to memorize all the details, because you're going to need them later. Okay now, can you find the rings that were not present in the original picture? Make sure to share your answer. Rings A, C, and F don't belong here. After a long day of work, Brooke is starving. She wants to grab something sweet, so she goes to the candy shop. Brooke has three options to choose from. Cotton candy, a candy cane, or a candy apple. Which food is dangerous? Let us know in the comments. Take a closer look at the cotton candy. There's a tiny spider stuck inside. Yikes! As for the apple, it has a little worm inside. So Brooke should definitely buy the candy cane. Brooke is passing by the food court and spots two families. One of them is super rich, while the other one very broke. Can you guess who is who? Think carefully, and feel free to leave your answer in the comment section below. Take a look at the second family. They don't eat this rotten food. The son is just taking pictures. Meanwhile, the first family shares one pizza and drinks water, which is usually free. And the mother's phone looks very outdated. Therefore, the super-rich family is on the right. Brooke walks up to the diner and sees six different burgers in the window. Try to memorize them. You're going to need the details later. Now, let's take a look at the nine images. Which of these burgers didn't appear in the initial picture? Give this video a thumbs up if you already know the answer. Burgers B, D, and E are all new. The next day, Detective Brooke receives a new mysterious case. Someone attacked Larry, the HR manager of a large international company. It happened about an hour ago. Brooke finds three suspects. The first one is Lily. She's an applicant who was a bit angry with Larry because he made her wait for ages. Lily stayed outside in the rain and probably caught a cold, but she says she didn't attack him. Kyle, the company's marketing director, attended meetings from early morning until lunchtime, so he claims he didn't see Larry at all. Jeff from the IT department tells Brooke that he rode his bike to a coffee shop to get his cappuccino. He returned just now. Who's the attacker? Hurry up to be the first to comment. Jeff. Both his bike and his clothes are dry and clean. How is that possible if it's raining? Jeff runs away. Detective Brooke starts chasing him. She ends up in a dusty basement. There are three tunnels leading outside. The first one is guarded by an invisible monster. This creature attacks anyone who dares to enter. The second tunnel is half flooded with poisoned water. Drinking it is fatal for any human. And the third tunnel is infested with mutant cockroaches. They can fly and bite people. Which way is more or less safe? Give this video a thumbs up if you already know the answer.
she should choose the second tunnel. The water's only dangerous if you drink it, so Brooke can just walk through the tunnel with her mouth closed and be safe. The next morning, Detective Brooke enjoys a day off at the beach. Suddenly, she hears a quarrel taking place nearby. This lady claims that someone has stolen her phone. Brooke spots the thief right away. Can you spot them? This blonde lady stole her phone. She's taking selfies with her own phone. But there's another one hidden in her swimsuit. Busted! Hit the like button if you manage to crack this riddle. Brooke spots six parrots on a tree and takes a picture. She visits the bathroom and then returns to the same tree. Can you find the parrots that were not present in her picture? Parrots A, E, and F arrived just now. Was it difficult? Let us know in the comments. Detective Brooke receives an emergency call from work. There's a dangerous visitor from another planet hanging out at the beach. It can look like a human, so Brooke should be very careful. Can you help her spot anything suspicious? Don't forget to share your thoughts. This volleyball player has too many arms for a regular human. Detective Brooke is working on her laptop in a coffee shop. Oops, it's time to visit the bathroom. Brooke decides it's safe enough to leave her stuff unattended. But after going to the bathroom, she finds out that her backpack and her laptop are missing. Brooke runs outside and sees three elderly ladies with picnic baskets sitting in the park. She interrogates them. But the ladies swear they didn't notice anything suspicious. Miss Anderson has just joined her friends. Miss Smith is eating her sandwich and reading a newspaper. And Miss Gold is taking pictures of squirrels. But still, Detective Brooke arrests one of the ladies. Can you guess who? Hurry up to be the first to comment. Brooke's backpack was red, remember? There's a red strap hanging out of Miss Anderson's picnic basket. Ooh, busted. Detective Brooke comes across a poster with six animals. A cat, a camel, a cheetah, a chicken, a crocodile, and a pig. Which animal doesn't belong here? The pig. It's the only animal whose name doesn't start with the letter C. But if you have a different answer, let us know. Brooke receives a call from her best friend, Amanda. She suspects that her boyfriend, Will, has a secret from her. Amanda wants to access his laptop to investigate, but she doesn't know his password. Luckily, there's a hint note right on his desk. It says, Apple, Man, and Dawn. Give this video a thumbs up if you crack this code. And the password is Amanda. Yep, her name is the code. Ah. Will was just preparing a surprise for Amanda's birthday. He took her on a romantic helicopter trip. But unfortunately, their vehicle broke down in the air, and they had to land on a tiny, uninhabited island. The guys can't call for help. Their cell phones and radio don't work. There are no trees on the island, only sand and rocks around them. So they can't make a smoke signal. Suddenly, Amanda notices a plane circling the sky. But unfortunately, it's flying too high, and the pilot can't see them. Will comes up with a bright idea, and soon after, the plane picks them up. What did they do? Think carefully and share your ideas.
They use rocks to spell out SOS on the sand. The plane takes Amanda and Will to the mainland. And now they need to take a bus to get home. Only one of these four buses will take them to their final destination. Can you guess which one? It's the second bus. Hit the like button if you nailed it. And if you want to train your thinking on a daily basis, don't forget to subscribe. A terrible virus broke free from a laboratory, and now all animals and plants on Earth are mutating uh -oh. at a horrifying speed. You've been trying to find the solution, but got trapped in the laboratory where it had all started instead. There are three doors you can escape through, but behind the first one, there's a bunch of aggressive flesh-eating cacti. The second door hides hundreds of poisonous bees. And the third door prevents an attack of fire-spitting dragon-like monsters. Which door can lead you to freedom? You can get out of there alive if you choose the first door. Even though the cacti eat flesh, they're still plants and can't move, so you can easily get around them. You've been kidnapped by an insane scientist who's going to test his new protective cream on you. After covering you with this lotion, he offers you to choose one of three containers where he'll then throw you. The first container is filled with radioactive waste. In the second container, there's an acid that can eat even through metal. And the third one is filled with lava from the largest volcano on Earth that erupted a year ago. Uh -oh. Which container should you choose? Pick the container with lava. If the volcano erupted a year ago, the lava must be already solid. Jessica, Lauren, and Matthew met at a business conference. All of them presented themselves as wealthy, successful entrepreneurs. Look at these people's hands attentively and try to figure out which of them is a real millionaire. Matthew seems to be wearing a Versace watch. But look, the name of the brand is written incorrectly, so it's fake. Lauren is wearing tons of jewelry, but take a closer look. There are lots of scratches on her bracelets. It's not real gold. The accessories are simply gilded. So the real millionaire is Jessica with her Tiffany bracelet. A very famous painting disappeared from a museum. Later. The police managed to find it, but there was a problem. They found not uh -oh. one, but three paintings. Only one of them is original, the others are just copies. Can you help the police figure out which is the original painting? It's the one with the brown frame. Take a look. All the frames in the museum are made in the same style. Now, take a good look at these prisoners. Which one is in no danger? Rats do bite humans and they can spread diseases. Bees can also be dangerous, especially if you're allergic to them. Meanwhile, Toads don't pose any threat to humans, so the third prisoner is safe. Take a look at these prisoners. Who do you think is more likely to survive? Flames can cause serious injuries. And if the rope burns, the consequences will be terrible so the first prisoner is definitely in danger. The second prisoner is forced to inhale toxic gases. It can't be good for his health, but the third prisoner can turn her body vertically, knock those sharp nails away with her feet, and clear her way to freedom. 
look at this picture and try to understand what's wrong here. Pay attention to the smallest details. The school bus doesn't have a door. How about this image? Can you spot anything weird here? Look at the clock. It's 7 past 10. So it's too late both for sunrise and sunset. Then what is that glowing disk sitting low in the sky? Now, look at these animals on the screen. A cat, a camel, a cheetah, a chicken, a crocodile, and a pig. Which animal doesn't belong here? The pig is the odd one out. It's the only animal whose name doesn't start with the letter C. Mr. Carter, a rich man who collected antiques, asked Detective Morris to visit him. When the detective arrived, the collector said that he had just got a precious statuette. But he needed to go away on business for a week, and he was afraid someone would break into his house. The statuette was insured, but the man was still worried. Detective Morris had some other urgent things to do, but he promised to come back in the evening to figure out the solution. But when he arrived several hours later, Mr. Carter told him in despair that he had driven his sister to the doctor and had been away for an hour or so. But when he came back, the statuette was gone. Detective Morris didn't believe the collector. Why? When he left the house in the afternoon, he noticed an empty plastic bottle lying in front of the right part of the gate. Look, it's still there. But for a car to drive through, both parts of the gate have to be open. This means that Mr. Carter lied about leaving his home by car. A renowned chemist disappeared right from his lab. There was no evidence except a piece of paper lying on his desk. The names of five elements were scrawled across it hastily. Nickel, carbon, oxygen, lanthanum, and sulfur. The guard reported that three people had visited the chemist that day. His sister, Laura, his colleague, Nicholas, and his wife, Tessa. The criminal was arrested immediately. Who was it? The list of chemicals is a clue. Their abbreviation spelled out the name Nicholas. Someone stole the principal's money. When the police came to investigate, they questioned the most likely suspects. The PE teacher said that he had had a break. The history teacher was having a lesson, and the music teacher said she had felt unwell and had gone home early. Can you figure out who the thief is? The music teacher is the thief. Oh, no. Look, she has gloves in her bag. Although it's summer. Suspicious. Mr. White, a rich businessman, disappeared right from his bedroom. But he managed to leave a note. It read, The 1st of July, the 4th of January, the 1st of December, the 8th of February. The police questioned the people who had been in the house at that time. Judy, Mr. White's wife, said that she didn't know anything because she had been away visiting her parents. Logan, Mr. White's secretary, told the police he'd been working on the report for his boss and hadn't left his study. And Rose, Mr. White's daughter, answered that she had guests and they hadn't left her room. Who knows something about Mr. White's disappearance? The one behind Mr. Oh, White's no. disappearance is his wife. The 1st of July means the letter J. The 4th of January, U. 
the 1st of December, D, and the 8th of February, Y. Together, it's Judy. Rachel called the police early in the morning. When they arrived, she told the officers her story. She worked in a museum. The day before, she took home several ancient books because she wanted to do some research. But then a blackout happened. She lit a couple of candles and continued her work. Suddenly, she heard the doorbell ring. When she opened the door, someone in a black mask hit her on the head. When she recovered, the books had been gone. The detectives arrested the woman for misreporting. Why? If there had been a blackout, the doorbell wouldn't have been working. Private Detective Deborah was doing some shopping at the mall. Suddenly, she heard people arguing. The woman went there and saw a stressed shop assistant and several people crowding him. The man had found a smartphone and made an announcement. And now, several people claimed it was their phone. One man said the phone must have slipped from his bag. A young woman said the gadget belonged to her. And an older woman shouted it was her husband's device. That's when the phone rang. For some reason, the shop assistant handed it to Deborah. The woman glanced at the screen and immediately gave the phone to the man. How did she understand whose device it was? Deborah saw the word wife written on the screen. Look at these three people who seem to be having fun. They're hanging from a tree, but one of them is a ghost. Can you guess who it is? The woman on the left has just rolled her eyes. That's why she looks so creepy. This guy is simply wearing a mask. But unlike the others, the hair of the lady on the right ignores gravity. She must be the ghost.